in the best of three action to start the day. We're going to have the blue pro as uh, up, to, oh, up to the top left hand side. This is Dark from Talon taking on Tramp. I've had Protoss from Gen G. Alright, so, uh, so I just uh, double checking everything is turned on properly and ready to go. Is this man observing? I think we've got an official observer here. Um, ooh, no, that doesn't look like we have an official observer. Alright, let's find someone to, to watch. My favorite observer's been missing. Indy's been gone for a while. Where's Indy been? Huh? Where's Indy been, guys? So a couple of problems moving about, spawning pool coming in, hatchery and gas all coming up as well as the Nexus Cyber Corner Simulator coming up as well. Just going to be seeing this continue to get going. Early few moments of the game, we settle down and figure out what the plan is here between Dark and Trap. Actually a great match, Trap's been playing great lately, we know Dark is playing very well. I think this is just a fantastic uh, opportunity to get things on the way. We're going to be having our links be coming up, a couple queens, lings, drones, everything producing. Now, when Nexus is building from Trap as well, about to finish. We're going to see his first tech choice being the Stargate as well. What's that in the back of the natural? So it's going to be pretty close by air. So that Oracle can get across the map very quickly, which is going to be a big plus as well. Expecting that in the near future. He's going to stalk a thing, a couple of links taking shots. It's going to be seeing the links still taking some damage. There's just a stalker coming about. I'm just going to be seeing the adept shading around as well. A couple drones on the move as well here. Link still gathering again. Oracle, the adept, the warp gate continuing through. The gateway coming up as well. It's going to be seen our pylon coming online, spore crawler coming in, hatchery building. Everything is still comfortable at the start of this game, but of course it's about to get exciting because we've got the oracle out and that's going to go across the map and potentially be able to zip zap in for a couple of drones here and there. So expecting that to be a little bit of action as the warp gate comes up, the gateway is still coming online, and a third nexus from traps. So no messing around in terms of setting up the economy. Just going to go to three bases nice and quickly. Oracle is activating a couple of drones going down. I'm just going to be seeing that Roach Roaring on the way up as well. Twilight Council coming in on the other side. This we get settled. Thank you, by the way, Jalea, coming in at the start of the stream with a 42 month resub. Sorry, it took me a little while to get to you. Let's just uh, make sure things were all good elsewhere. Just catching back up on chat. Would I know if Indy had retired? Yeah. I mean, I, I've noticed that he's not here for the last week or two, but I would uh, imagine that he's going to be back at some point. I mean,. I mean, maybe I wouldn't notice, but like, I would like to think I would. I mean, I noticed that he's not been here, right? So, yeah. Maybe he's just up to something. He last streamed a week ago. It's very likely he just took a week off. Maybe he's on holiday or something, you know? Like, these things happen. I also disappear places for a week sometimes. Anyways, Roach's Ling's coming up on the side of Darks. So plenty of units coming up from him. He's sending this. This is obviously uh, Glaive's on the way from Trap as well, which is not going to necessarily help him against this attack. Dark Shrine starting that would help him if it was any sooner, but I feel like this game is going to be well decided by the time Dark Shrine is finished.
queens, roaches, lings coming across, but that's going to be a lag spike. Who's lagging out? It's me! Oh, that's a good one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yep, okay, that's a great start to try full screen. That might be a little bit better as his attack from Dark gets going. Now we have a third base and trap will go down, but that's the correct way to do this. Give up the third base and then just, uh, you know, focus on defending the natural. And obviously with the Dark Shrine coming in, he's soon going to have an answer to this. CTs could go across the map and maybe deal some damage as well, though there's no pylon to warp into the other side. Of course, we're going to have Glaives on the Adepts to help now. Also, Dark is still only building units, so Dark really thinks he can break through this, but I just don't think that's true with the Dark Shrine being up. There are spores at home, but there's not units at home, but I don't even think that's going to be really necessary. I think we just use the DTs to play defense here. You're going to kill everything. I mean, these links are going to try and stream through, but there's resonating glaives. And Dark is just going to type GGs because he cannot deal with... The thing is, he could have gone home if he'd started droning sooner. If he started droning instead of making, you know, a tremendous amount of additional lings and roaches and so on, then yes... But he kept on building units all the way throughout that until he pulled the trigger. And you pulled the trigger as the DTs showed up. So, yeah. You, uh, you can't go home. Like I say, maybe if he'd start drawing a little bit sooner or so, maybe that would have been, uh, alrighty. But that was just not the case, so there you go. Alright, a few drones mining away here. It is going to be in the top left corner of the map. The blue Zerg player down in game in this series. It is a dark. Well, in the bottom right-hand corner, it's going to be taking the lead. A red Protoss player trap. Alrighty then, game number two as we get into this. Let's see. What the plan will be this time? Dark trying to get aggressive didn't quite work out for him as it gets set up to roll. This is going to be seeing the side before dropping in. Again, Nex is coming up. Hatch, Gas, and Pool all coming into play. Getting ourselves ready in the first couple of moments. Just getting things up and rolling here. Trap win. Yep, trap win. Defense in that first game. DT's putting in work. Beautiful stuff to start us off as we just have Probe coming back, delivering some minerals. First map is who's pick? I have no idea. What would you put on Ghost River? Would it be neither or, to be honest? Depth is going to move about, a couple of probes move around, the Link's going to start up. Stargate going to be building, going to bring that through in a couple of moments, just going to get that going. Let's see how still for fight, you know, we're looking to fire up some shots as well. Just going to push that over to the sides. Just already seeing the Oracle coming up, the Link Speed coming through. We get that settled in for a couple of moments. And I'm just going to see that Oracle moving up. That right side as well. It's just going to move around the Void Ray. Someone coming about for a couple of moments as well. It's going to go moving as you have the Adepts continue to gather together. Oracle still setting up. Let's see that Oracle up around the top. Killing is trying to run forward. A couple of depths are going to be there. 
something that we have in ourselves. The Twilight Council and a couple extra gates coming through as well. President Glaive is going to be the choice for traps. The second game in a row where he's going to play into the uh, Glaives here. Also moving around again, that Resonant Glaive is coming through. The Lair and the Nexus continue to come up as well. Okay, they're still coming in for now as we just have our Queens locking onto the Oracle, pushing that back around a little bit. See how the Glaives does, obviously, this time, Dark not going to be aggressive. I see our depth moving around, melee upgrades coming through, Bane has come in as well. You see now Depths getting into the center, a couple links going down. Two Depths gonna go shading about. And there's a lot of links, and obviously a few bench would be nice to keep this back as well and trap. The way that he's doing this is obviously without a uh, prism, right? So you can't really reinforce the Adepts kind of on the go. So we're just going to be seeing those adepts not going to be unable to commit. Against Ling Bane, sometimes with a prism, you can just keep going. Because as the Banes get used up, you can just warp in more adepts. Let's see the Oracle activating. A couple of creep team is going down. We're seeing the Queens coming across. Again, the melee upgrade coming up. Hydra's on the way. Overlord in the Groove Spines. Continuing to build. Steps in the uh, sentries continue to the top and just having ourselves the blink and the prism continuing to come around for the moment. Now we have ourselves a couple more simulators coming in. Forge is also on the way up here currently. Army of uh, Trap just holding out the front, figuring out. If he actually wants to commit to a fight or not, I think it's very difficult, but it is a bit, uh, slow baneling still. As long as it's slow banelings, I would say there's always something of a chance that we perhaps commit through on this one. The force field's coming down, there's a couple of banes smash in, they don't really do all that much. A couple of uh, adepts continue to come by, these banelings continue to come through, the adepts continue to get chased. Lings and Hydras pushing down, and we do see the Adepts going to get away from the moment. The Lings continue across, going to see the Stalkers going down. The Adepts get into the natural expansion, where a couple of these drones are going to get picked away at as well. Stalkers load up, load back down for the moment. Back in we go. We've seen that Void Ray continue to move around a little bit as well, so I'm continuing to get a running here. We've seen our Stalkers continue to pull away. And uh, there for a couple of moments, it's going to be seeing this pull pullback. Colossus is going to be showing up as well. It's going to be seeing our uh, veins continue to crash forward. Stalkers, the battery, continue to take quite a lot of damage. A lot of shots coming through on that one as we do see 20 probes going down. So Dark getting damage done as he's made it across the map here. That's fantastic news. Let's just have the last few units trapped trying to hold on. But I do not really think that this is going to be enough. And as you can see, it is definitely not going to be enough. GG's. We are going to have ourselves Dark tying this series up. So we're going to go to 1-1. One one. We are going to go to a game 3. It all tied up here. Let me get this one. Ready to start. So into game we go.
Pick this up into action. Top left, our blue Zerg player is Dark. Bottom right, our red Protoss is Trap. Let's get this underway. Now he goes a woo woo woo. As we get that started up. And we just see our Axis coming through. I'm just going to be seeing this Overlord stepping forward a little bit as well and taking a little bit of a move here. Taking a chance to step up just that little bit. Just settle for a couple of moments then, so take a few, figure out what the plan is, figure out where we're going to go to. Probably just uh, trying to nibble up a few moments here and there as well. Trying to see if there's any opportunity for them to maybe show up and put some work in. World moves, Stargate opening again from Trap definitely has been mixing up a little bit with the Glaive follow-ups and everything though. I'm seeing the probe coming back down to the bottom right for the moment, getting across over there. Just for now, looking good. As we do have. A few lings in the probe chasing about a little bit as well. Yeah, that warp gate coming up, we got that on the way. Settled down for a couple moments. Again the ling speed coming up for the moment. Well, depths move up, just going to be seeing the Oracle on the way. We'll get about a finish. Uh, Gateway and Probe still producing two. The Queen's going to get there. Depths get pushed back. I'm just going to go get a little wrap around. I'm still flying and depth taking some damage. Take a like the same moment or two to move around, figure out what our plan's gonna be. Just gonna be seeing the Twilight Council and Forge coming up, the Nexus continuing through as well. I a couple of drones actually going to get uh, some shots onto him as well. It's just going to be seeing a little bit of damage there. 
and just our spawn and pool coming on the line. There's the nice network coming up. Stock so gonna get aggressive. He's just spamming up links, queens, and obviously we'll have the bailing that's finishing soon as well. So he can add some banes into this. The Oracle sees what's up. The Oracle sees that this is gonna happen as our stalkers and the adepts settle to try and push away on this. There are the queens popping out. The banes start to morph, and Dark has brought a very aggressive tone to this series, and I think that's gonna be very true here again as we get this one now rolling on out. Seeing a few links moving through. And actually get pushed back a little bit there. It's just gonna get shoved away for a few moments. Battery already putting some work in, healing up the oracles that are in this guy, trying to keep those as healthy as possible as well. Nice in the main base, at least it's gonna go down, but we're gonna put another one down immediately. It's just gonna try and get that settled straight away there. Because our oracles are fighting, the queens are taking hits. Just going to be seeing the Queens continue to push and fight on through, trying to make it to the other side. As our Stalkers continue to fight as well, Super Battery still very much so active at the moment. I think we start to run through the Stalkers and the probes gather up for a couple of seconds. Still active, just gonna be seeing the Nidus. He's gonna be getting grabbed here as well. 13, 15, 16, 17 probes going down. It's gonna be a rough one for a few moments here as we do have continuation. It's gonna be seeing the Nidus taking a little bit more damage as well. Still getting hit, 28 dead probes, so dog doing damage, but I mean, Trap's army supply is much better. If you can stabilize from here, rebuilding the workers of three bases should not be that bad for him. It's these constant lings popping out of other Nidus's, but this is going to get stopped now as well. That Nidus goes down, these few lings fall. A few more lings continue to drop. Couple of Zelda's gonna fight, couple of team is taking hits. Again, the Lings get turned around. Evolution Chamber coming up, Groove Spines coming in. Additional probes all coming out as well from traps. So we continue to bring that by. These Oracles move to the upper left hand side. Queen's gonna shoot, the Oracles take some damage. The hatchery continues to come into play from Dark as he sets up for the future. Like I say, the economy is very good for Dark, but with the few drones going down here, six workers dying, and trap probing, it's only a 17 worker difference. Considering Dark does have to consider making some units here, you know, he can't just build drones. It is going to be trapped within reach of the economy. And with an army supply already advanced, uh, uh, favoring trap, and with the Oracle still able to pick off some drones in the future as well, I actually think this is a fairly playable position for trap, which may not be that bad for him altogether, to be honest. You see a few links still gathering up. Stalker, Zealots, and Sentry move around a little bit as well. Back over the other direction. It's gonna get a little recall off, just gonna be having the Oracle brought back home, so maybe they will not do any more after that nine extra workers kill. But that is good because now it's 49 to 46. Doc is still building a couple extra. Trying to bring those back into play. Probe facility, probe, sentry, stalker, all continuing out here. We do have that armor upgrade coming in from trap as well. We continue to bring that through. And trap maintain this. Let's see a few more hydras coming up. The overlords are on the way. Plus one melee, painless speed. Let's go, Augments all coming through as well, so all of that coming about. We see now a couple extra drones going down, those Oracles still putting the pressure in. 
still finding ways to deal damage and keeping dro Dog's Drone Count very honest here. I guess is my issue just going to be the tech that we have online for Trap? I mean, now this is just Blink Stalkers. Against a Zerg that's reaching kind of full kind of full force Ling Bane Hydra. This is the point where you'd probably expect in a normal game for the transition to start coming through from Trap. Obviously, he's not invested into that yet just now. He puts down the Robo Bay. I think that's going to be his issue. I actually think numbers-wise, he's done fine. But because he's been afraid of where he's at, he's not really focused on the idea of putting the Robo, you know, putting the Robo Bay or Temple Archives into play. And because of that delay, I think that might be where Dark succeeds, especially if Dark is just going to send this with like 70 drone Ling Bane Hydra. I think that could become very difficult to stop, so it'd be very interesting. We see an infestation break coming up as well. Playing Hydra as the Bane's continue to move across, plus two attack continue to come over. Half coming up, Lurkin 10 coming through. I just think Trap is, like I say, being a little slow and getting going. Look at Den's halfway through, the Hive's halfway about, plus two melee upgrade coming by. Things Hydra's just gonna work their way through the rocks in the center of the map as well, knock those down, open that up. Now Temple Archives and a second Robo Facility, I mean, if I, I kind of felt like Doc was gonna go. Especially because he's sitting on 70 drones. Now, he is adding a Lurk Den, he is adding a Hive, so maybe it is just the fact that he wants to tech up, but I, I really felt like Dark was going to pull the trigger, to be honest. Obviously, that has not turned out to be the case. Just yet. I think Hydra is going to jump forwards. Rocks will go down the left side. Storm. Archon's coming up as well. Just going to be seeing that plus three attack coming through too. The Bane's going to get grabbed. Things come across, Kalazar's gonna be there. Lingus is gonna go after the Archon's battery is and take some damage as well. Lingus is gonna run in on the left hand side. Alright, just look, is just gonna be there. A couple of units getting pushed back. Probe start to go down as we do have workers in that bottom left hand side just gonna get evaporated. And I can say I just do not think Trap's tech came online in time. I was surprised the dog then left it so long, but of course the rush up to Lurkers is Clearly worked in his favor as well. Those Lurkers now helping to zone these units out and walking into range here as the Lurkers just got their additional range. Hydra's uh, continuing through the super battery. The units actually back away. Those two Lurkers on the uh, low ground are actually so good. They zone a really good area here as the Lings are going to keep on streaming forwards and dark. Because he's only on 70 drones, this is not as guaranteed of a cleanup as you might think it is. I think most of the time this would be game over for the Protoss. Dark's kind of self-hurt economy is, is not quite able to kind of boom the next set of units through as you might wish them to. And that's why Trap is kind of hanging on in here. Holding on, just killing off a few units. He needs detection against these Lurkers, though. He's got one Observer. He needs to just go and clean those out, because he can't let these Lurkers keep on dealing damage. Ideally, you stop losing probes now. And if you stop losing probes now, I do think we can do okay. Revelation goes down that Lurker. We had an Observer nearby a second ago. Now we don't have any units here. 35 probes lost. I think this is just going to be... Yeah. Too much. GG's. Dark is going to take the 2-1. And that is going to be uh, Dark taking the 2-1 victory.